Hi. Um, this is Hi. Naomi, the holistic travel nurse. Um, I have my friend, a new friend, Beverly on, and she's going to share her story with us today. Um, Beverly um, has been successful with the scale. She's been up and down in her health. She invested in her health, invested in knowing with understanding her body. She's read some of the same books I have and has an impactful story that I think that this is going to support many others. So Beverly, thank you for being on the podcast and the channel today. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's really nice to be able to offer some insight for, into my own journey that may be of help to other people. They might see some of themselves in me. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And um, they can explore ideas to conquering the scale. This is what this whole right. series is on. So um, you are from Canada. I'm in the U.S. And you said, it's, I don't want to make you jealous. As we're recording this, it's negative like 28 degrees or something ridiculous. Where I am, um, yeah. And I have my AC on and I live in an RV and I'm, today it's warm in South Carolina. So don't, don't get jealous. Oh, I'm jealous already. <laughs> but I did have a little hoodie on. <laughs> I only have another two months of this to go through before it starts to look like we might get anything like spring. <laughs> yeah. And then you're an artist, um, so am. that is so exciting. You'll have to send me pictures of some of your art that's uh, definitely. even in galleries. I have a, a stepmom I want, might have you connect with who does um, art shows and has things in galleries. So Oh, that's great. And sure. I have a daughter who's an artist, so I love my artists because I, I really don't, but I, I, I feel like I like crafts, but I'm not an artist, and I really love the way that artistic look at the world and then put it on canvas or oh, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you have two children. You have five parent children. Absolutely, and, yeah. And you've had this um, huge change. And it's, it's, it's recent though, too. It's only been how many, how long? Is 18 it? months, 18 yeah. months. That, yeah, from uh, August 4th, 19, uh, not 19. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm really old. <laughs> August <laughs> August 4th last 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me about you went and saw you had to switch doctors. You were telling me before this all recorded and you had to go see a new doctor and they did all this blood work and said you were pre-diabetic and you told me they sent you to a dietitian. Tell me about what right. happened with this dietitian and mm -hmm being finding that you have fatty liver and you're pre-diabetic and you need yeah. to lose weight and you're trying to do these things right. for your health. Right. Um, and so you see this dietitian and what happens? Well, what happens is I go in and I get the usual spiel about, uh, I'm sure it's a usual spiel because it's all on computer and she brings up the pages and you read along with her and then she goes and prints it all off and says, okay, here's your dietary schedule for the next four weeks. And until you go back and see your doctor. And uh, so part of that regimen is eating three meals a day, plus at least two snacks. <laughs> and that includes uh, grains at every meal and uh, no fat or low fat. Uh -huh. um, very little dairy if possible in any way, shape or form. Uh, okay. Use margarine, not butter. <laughs> um, here's canola oil, sunflower or safflower oils. It's no mention of any other kind. Um, yeah, basically the thing was to eat these uh, three meals a day plus, plus have two snacks, preferably uh, at the minimum. And uh, if you had an extra snack, that's fine. There was um, not really a much discussion about, um, I would say, insulin levels, how your body's own insulin production functions. There was nothing to do with any of those processes our body naturally does. Um, so really, and I think I was in a state of kind of shock anyways, because I certainly didn't expect to have gone with a diagnosis of already being pre-diabetic. Um, the numbers up here for blood sugars are a little different in the US and mine okay. was 6.4. I don't know what Ooh. that co goes to for the U.S. numbers. Oh, and I just have to correct something. I started this in August 2018, not 2019. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of where it was as the experience with the di dietitian. There was really 
I don't remember being given any information on any what carbohydrate types were, like simple or complex. I don't oh remember goodness. anything like that. I, it was really just basically go home, eat, make sure you include bread, cereal, uh, which, you know, is grains and... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, certainly meat and, and vegetables and whatever, because I'm not a vegetarian. And uh, include uh, fruit. You can have fruit a couple times a day. So um, I cut back the sugary drinks, that type of thing. Uh, cut down on junk food. But the thing was, I wasn't a junk food uh, eater to begin with. I wasn't a candy eater to begin with. So, and I wasn't a pop drinker, except with the exception of a very rare time. So the whole thing for me was a mystery as to why I was in this situation because I really felt I was eating healthy. Um, you know, I did try and watch my meal planning and, you know, making things. So it, this was a real mystery and very, I was very much in shock and very, very distressed, very distressed. And then what so, happened yeah. that, okay, so you do 12 weeks of this, right? Uh, four. Four weeks. Oh, four weeks. Four, four weeks. weeks yeah, four weeks. Yeah. And then and what then happens I, with the checkup? Then I, okay, so then I go back to my doctor. So I never did see that dietitian again. I go back to the doctor um, who takes all the new numbers with all the new blood work and everything and sends me, uh, a, you know, a, a notice, you better come in right away and see me after she got the results back from all of the mm -hmm. different tests. And she sits me down and she said, um, you are now diabetic. Your mm. blood sugars are 12.2. And she just looked at me and she said, you are carbohydrate intolerant. Well, <laughs> that was, that was, that was a kind of a double-edged sword as the way I would put it, because I, first of all, I did not know what carbohydrate intolerance was, but it also became the jumping off point for me to discover what that exactly was. And that's how it ended up leading me into um, taking hold of my own uh, life, basically, mm -hmm. to turn it around. Because I thought, I have to find out what this means. So that meant that I had to uh, find out what carbohydrates were. I, I mean, I knew some, you know, but I really didn't know very much. Mm -hmm. So I remembered I had a friend who had also uh, reversed her diabetes and she mm -hmm. had lost a ton of weight and I called her up and I said what did you do and she said the first thing you need to do is go and get these two books the obesity code and the diabetes code written both by Dr. Jason Fung mm -hmm. uh, and he is a nephrologist up here in mm -hmm. Canada so <clears throat> I I thought, okay, you know, there's nothing left to lose here. I have hit my bottom. My health is just so bad. I, mm -hmm. At the time, I, was, uh, I just turned 65 the day, two days before this mm. happened. And um, I had so much exhaustion. I was exhausted all the time. I was obese. Um, I, gosh, I had sleep disturbances. I had age spots all over my hands and my face and my arms. I was in pain from the arthritis and uh, I was always hungry. That was the other thing. I was always mm -hmm. hungry. And, um, that, but I think for me, the tiredness was the biggest thing. The tiredness had been increasing for, for several years. And that was one thing this friend had pointed out to me. She said, you're always tired. And I said, yeah, but now it was beyond tired. I was plain old exhausted to the bone by this particular point and I couldn't walk very far without being totally fatigued the front door to the end of my driveway is maybe 40 feet I would need to almost sit down and get my breath back just to go that far and so I figured at that point that given another year like that I would probably be walking with a walker to get around because I had absolutely no energy. I was totally tanked right out. Wow. And so you got the books, you started reading them right away? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Well, I, Were even you surprised? Before, <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, it's a whole new language for me, all of this sort of like medical information. A, it is a lot of but, medical information. But uh -huh. it's simple. He, I do have to say he does write it simply. So, and he has a sense of humor. So it, the way he would describe things was a real eye opener. And I could certainly see why the formation of the processes that had now taken place in my body were affecting my life. I could understand them to some degree. And I mean, it took, I have to be honest, it took me rereading that stuff many, many, many more times. But I did uh, change the eating as soon as I could, like, which was like within two days. Um, I change my eating and I, I'm one of these kind of people for something I jump right in both feet and I sort of figured I have nothing left to lose so I'm just going to go this cold turkey and I just went through a binge in my house of taking out yeah lots of stuff <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah replacing it yeah so but the books were fantastic I have to uh, agree with you on that and I certainly recommend them to other people that ask me about some help for themselves too. I always do. It's just the best, I think, um, information that's out there for the common lay person to read without having a medical background. Yeah, I, I actually, I have a medical background and I like that for me, I love that he puts, <clears throat> he makes it where the lay person and also he explains to us what, <laughs> why the heck they are so wrong with them, all the studies yeah. and what's been said over the years. And, um, and all the studies that have been done that just been ignored by mainstream yeah. media. That was a and shock. That, exactly. And that there's a massive amount of people that are just been um, making money off you for weight mm -hmm. loss for years. Right. Um, and so, cause you said before we started this too, that you've done Weight mm -hmm. Watchers and before in the past and things. So as for right now, how successful are the numbers on the scale and how often do you weigh yourself? I don't weigh myself at all anymore. I finally <laughs> got down. 